it's one of the greatest treats I have on this show. Being a kid who would watch movies on Saturdays and whenever they played in uh, out of the New York market, and I would have a lot of fun with that. And uh, I would see people who made an impression upon me for their acting skills and their grace and their beauty and their versatility. And I am interviewing one of these people tonight. Her name is Lisa Zanti. She was known in the acting world as Lisa Montel. Uh, numerous TV shows and films, uh, a fantastically long career, a, um, a great amount of service in the humanitarian vein, and a, just a wonderful life, and she keeps on going. Lisa, I am honored. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. And I wanted to ask you, um, where were you born and how did you come? I understand uh, you were born in Poland and you came to the U.S. How did that all come about? Yeah, well, yes, I was born in Warsaw, in Poland. And uh, my father, who uh, traveled around the world in his business dealings and spent a great deal of time in the United States, uh, was very aware of um, Hitler and uh, the impending mm -hmm. catastrophe. As this was back in the um, late 1930s. And uh, he uh, determined to get us out of Poland, and he did it just three months before Hitler invaded. We wow. came to the United States. So that's how I arrived here, and we settled in New York at that time. Now, you came to New York, and later did you go to Florida? Yeah, I've been a lot of places. <laughs> when we lived in New York, uh, which was first in Manhattan, on, right across from Central Park, we had this wonderful apartment uh, that was um, just, you know, right there with the park. Uh, right, yes, yeah, gorgeous. And uh, we had a... Uh, a summer home in, or rather, I'm sorry, a winter home in uh, Florida in Fort Pierce, mm -hmm. which um, is, you know, down near, near closer to Miami. And um, so every, every winter we would, or most winters anyway, we would travel down there. We had an orange grove in a home. And um, eventually, because of his business dealings, uh, we actually moved down to Florida for a while. My, well, my father was in Peru, where he was um, involved in business, and that's how I spent about a year, to year and a half or so, living in Florida. And uh, <clears throat> where did you graduate high school? Was it Florida? Yeah, actually there. Now, in New York, I went to two of the most fabulous high schools in the world. Uh, this was uh, way back in the, you know, or 40s. And um, one was the high school of music, music and art, where I was an art major. Mm -hmm. And I loved that. It was just an incredible high school. And um, while I was there, a new high school opened up, the High School of Performing Arts. And that intrigued me even more, so I auditioned for that and got in uh, as a drama major. So I attended those two high schools in New York before we had to move. So my last year I spent in Florida as a high school student and graduated from, um, what was <clears throat> I think, St. Lucie High School <laughs> in Fort Pierce. It's, uh, yeah, so, so you certainly did live in a lot of places. Now, I, I understand, um, I was going to ask you how you got to Hollywood, but somehow there was a movie, Daughter of the Sun God, that was <laughs> held up in release. And what was the exact sequence of events there that got you to Hollywood? And where did Daughter of the Sun God fit in with that whole train of events? I'll tell you right away, but I'm just curious. Did you ever get to see the movie? No, you know, I tried to look it up, and I tried to find it. I couldn't. 
Yeah, they did finally release it, and so there are copies of it around. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, <clears throat> as I said, my father had business interests in Peru, and they eventually um, made it necessary for us to move there. Um, so, excuse me one second. <clears throat> so, um, oh, I was attending uh, the University of Miami at that time, and my father said traveling is more important, and uh, mm -hmm. he was a great believer in people being able to travel and meet different cultures, different people, and so on. So he said, this will be the better education for you. So uh, off we all went to uh, live in Lima, Lima, Peru. And while I was there, I attended uh, university and took various art courses and so on. But uh, there was a group of Americans who were not professional uh, actors by any means. They were business people, educators, just whatever. And they had formed uh, the Lima Drama Workshop or something like that to put on uh, English-speaking theater. And so uh, the moment I heard about that, I immediately asked, you know, I went there and joined them. And so I played in several theater productions in Lima. And apparently at one of them, uh, there was a producer and, um, and uh, people involved in making, who had come to Lima to make a movie, which ended up being Daughter of the Sun God. Ah. And they, they brought the, the actor who was to play the lead, Bill Holmes, was, I believe, the uh, heir to the Fleischmann East fortune and... They were sort of um, funding the whole project. And they were looking for a local actor or actress to play the lead in the, the female lead. So when they saw me, they asked to audition me, and they did. And they, you know, we did a screen test. And I got the part. So that's how I got the female lead in that movie. I, I, I understand. And... How did the, how did your path actually get you into Hollywood from there? Okay, so we made the movie, which was fun and you know terrifying in many ways. Like a guy almost got killed a few times. Huh. <laughs> it was really quite an extraordinary event. But um, apparently, uh, even though the movie was not well received. There was a lot of interest in, in me because people thought I had real promise and all of that. Mm -hmm. And um, I really was not interested in leaving Peru at that time, having a wonderful life there. Made a few more local films and uh, various projects in Peru. But then, um, unfortunately, my father died. Mm. And... Um, so, you know, my mother and I had to decide what to do, and I, I thought, well, you know, they were, you know, really after me to come to Hollywood, which uh, is very nice. Most people had to struggle to get there. They were, you know, <laughs> uh, asking me. So I said, I really would like to give it a chance. And my mother was wonderful, and she said, look, just don't be disappointed if nothing happens, but if you want to give it a try, I'll support you in every way, and off we went. So we came to Hollywood, and um, because of the people who had made Daughter of the Sun God, the producer and others, they introduced me. And at that time, I think it was called MCI, one of the largest um, agencies, mm -hmm. you know, uh, film agencies immediately took me on and started, uh, you know, having me go to various interviews. And I just started working. And um, eventually, though, I didn't really enjoy where I wasn't comfortable being with that uh, organization. And I ended up with uh, the Hamburg Agency, who were primarily doing 
uh, work for Jean Autry. Ah. <laughs> and that's how I ended up doing all kinds of Westerns. Up to that time, I was playing Europeans and, you know, well, I was... and, and so on. But then I ended up doing all these Westerns, and I started doing all kinds of Indian roles and um, Mexican roles and wonderful ethnic roles. I had more fun. Well, I was going to ask you about that. I mean, in, in your roles, I mean, they were very athletic. You, uh, I mean, yeah. what, one of my favorites is She Gods of Shark Reef. I mean, you, you're wrestling with sharks. Then in other movies, yeah. you're running and you're falling off horses. I mean, and you didn't have a stunt lady. You did this all yourself. And was it because right. you were a, a very good athlete and very adept at things? Yes, and I didn't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> but um, actually, I, I was a good swimmer. I always loved swimming. And I was uh, loved horseback riding. So I did that well. So there was no reason not to do it, you know. And um, a lot of the roles that uh, I got, I think, connected with that, you know, that I mm. was able to do so many things. And... Um, yeah, somebody once said you should be, you know, the perils of Montel. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, I had quite a adventurous time, I think, in Hollywood. It, 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 it's certainly amazing. Now, two people you work with uh, whose careers I really liked and followed, you worked with uh, Virginia Mayo in Pearl of the South Pacific, and you worked with Dean Martin in 10,000 Bedrooms. Could you give me your recollections of both Dean and Virginia? Yeah, well, she was, of course, really gorgeous. I, you know, very, very lovely. And, you know, it's interesting. I don't know about other people's experiences, but in my case, uh, you know, most of it was on a very work-like business level. You know, we, it's not like we socialized that much. Mm -hmm. So I can't say I really got to know her personally that much, but working with her was wonderful. And uh, Alan Dwan, who was the um, director, was uh, absolutely a dear, dear man. No, yes, that's right. He did that movie and Escape to Burma at RKO. And um, so, you know, then that that was one of those. I think that right. was maybe the first one where I played a native. Uh, like Polynesian, Hawaiian, whatever, island <laughs> uh, girl, and um, went on to do quite a few of those. And, and what is your yeah. ethnic background, just so we can have that on the record? Okay, so, but just before we go into that, uh, you asked me about Dean. Oh, I'm sorry, Yeah, uh, thank, uh, th thank you for reminding me. Yes, let's, let's complete the previous question. Yeah, and she got the shock. So anyway, she got... Uh, took me to Hawaii, and that was another of those wonderful, where I made two movies where I played Native Girls. Um, right. What was it? It ended up being Naked Paradise, and, uh, and then um, the um, She Gods of Shark Reef. And um, absolutely wonderful getting to go to Hawaii. That was part of the really joy of doing these films so I got to travel so much and experience places I might not have gone to otherwise and so that was another whole adventure we can talk about if you'd like. Sure. <laughs> Excuse me. I may be coughing a little bit. Sorry about that. That's perfectly okay. Um, as far as Dean Martin, he was the funniest. He was just <coughs> Uh, you know, we, I only knew him from when he used to do films with um, uh, Dean and what was it? Um, Jerry Lewis? Jerry, Jerry Lewis. And Jerry Lewis was the funny one and like Dean was the straight guy. Well, Dean was, in real life, Dean was the crack up and J Jerry was more the serious guy. Mm -hmm. So, but Dean Martin was funny, funny, funny. He just constantly joking, um, not sure how sober he was a good deal of the time, but it didn't matter. He, he was absolutely wonderful. 
and uh, that whole movie was just a lot of fun to make, yeah. And uh, so you, you wanted to know what my background is? Yeah, uh, because you played uh, Indian women and island women and exotic women. What is your actual background? So um, it's a mix of Polish, Russian, and Tatar. So Tatar is a little bit, you know, more uh, Asian. And so I get those high cheekbones and... Ah. Um, if, if, if I'm in my normal skin, I'm very rather pale and probably look very European, if nothing else. But put some dark makeup on me and the right hair and sarong or whatever, and um, I change, you, you know, very quickly. <laughs> they used to call me, or at least somebody did, and wrote an article, uh, Starlet of a Thousand Faces. Mm. Because I did so many of these ethnic roles, you know, just uh, all kinds. Right. Just about everything you can imagine. And uh, all it had to do with the, the whatever costume or hairdo or, you know, makeup was necessary. And I seemed to transform like any good chameleon. <laughs> Now, the um, the Corman movies, Thunder Over Hawaii and She Gods of Shark Reef, you right. were, uh, were those movies made uh, in sequence? Were you on Hawaii for a while doing no. uh, those roles? What we did is we performed, we did some of the underwater sequences off of Catalina, ah. California, because the, wet, the water was very clear and very easy to work there. Sure. So we spent quite a bit of time there. Then we went to Hawaii and we did uh, Thunder Over Hawaii, which was also called Naked Paradise. Mm -hmm. I think it came out under both titles at different times. And um, we did that one first. And um, they left and then we did She Got the Shark Reef. So altogether I was there probably a couple of months. It was, you know, just... One of the most delightful experiences, Hawaii, as you must know, is gorgeous and just, it was a splendid, splendid experience. Boy, that's wonderful. And then, at the peak of your career, you leave acting. Can you tell us about that and what caused you to, quote-unquote, separate from service? Yeah, well, first of all, um... I have always been interested in so many things, mm -hmm. and uh, acting was one of them, but not the only thing. I understand. And so I wasn't that committed to just being an actress. Uh, when my father died, because of some very unfortunate circumstances, uh, we didn't get the... Um, the kind of money we should have gotten, and so my mother and I uh, had to, you know, think carefully about uh, what we were going to do, and I realized I needed to go to work. And when uh, films came my way, you know, and the door opened, I was more than delighted to uh, take that opportunity because, frankly, I didn't know what else I could do. I was very young and totally, uh, you know, inexperienced. And so that was a true godsend you know, that I was given that opportunity, that uh, wonderful chance to um, work in such a fun, lucrative way. Yeah. So, um, so that was that. But in other words, what I'm saying is that it wasn't the only great passion of my life. And um, different things came together, how they sometimes do in life. Um, I became a member of the Baha'i Faith and became very, very committed and involved in um, uh, doing work that I felt was serious and very important and necessary and uh, started doing a lot of volunteer work in the community with um, uh, having to do with uh, underprivileged children and lots of other things. So that became a great 
interest of mine and um, fighting injustice and uh, working against racial prejudice and all of these things. So that really became a very important thing for me. Um, also, um, it was in the period where films were changing and were beginning to take on much more of a overt sexual nature. Mm -hmm. You know, um, up, when I was in films, they were still very, I would say, modest <laughs> in, uh, in various ways, but it was changing and I was not comfortable with that the so-called overt, you know, right. explicit sexuality. And then my agent died. It was someone who I had great um, confidence in and felt very uh, comfortable working with. So all these factors and others, personal things that happened in my life, came together. And when the door opened for me to... Um, get involved in the Head Start program to become a teacher uh, in that program, uh, I, I went for it. I went from earning, gosh, two to three thousand dollars a day to earning five hundred dollars a month. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> How about that? That's a, a big, big change. But um, for me it was an important change and um, anyway I, I felt that was something I was mm -hmm. moved very motivated to do now when you were teaching in Head Start did anybody recognize you as uh, Lisa Montel the actress or were you Mrs. Zanti <laughs> it's, it's by the way Tony it's like Jaja it's Zanti Zanti yes <laughs> um, no, nobody recognized me, and I never talked about it. You know, I never brought it up because wow. it was like part of my past and had nothing to do with the work I was doing then. And remember, when I was in films, most of the time I was in dark makeup and speaking with an accent and wearing uh, costumes, you know, of various ethnic kinds, and looked quite different from, you know, my usual... Myself. So, um, no, and I didn't bring it up. So uh, very few people really knew that I had even been in films. That, that, that's, that's a marvelous story. I understand there was a gentleman by the name of Howard Hughes who took an interest in you along the way. Um, is, uh, that, uh, is that a true statement, and uh, can you uh, elucidate us on that? Yeah, well, he... That was one of several, what you might say, um, opportunities that I definitely did not take uh, that came my way. And um, when I did the two films at RKO, uh, Escape to Burma and Pearl of the South Pacific, Howard Hughes at that time owned the studio. Mm -hmm. uh, that was before it became Desi Lou. And, uh, you know, when Lucille Wall and Desi Arnaz took over. So uh, when I made Escape to Burma, um, which was a very small role, I had a bigger role in the Pearl of the South Pacific. But anyway, uh, there were, of course, the um, publicity photos, and he saw the film, and uh, apparently took a real interest in me and um, made clear to my agent that he wanted to put me under contract, personal contract. And um, so my agent, I remember, called and said, don't go anywhere, don't do anything, just stand by, you know, uh, a meeting is being set up for you with him. And um, I remember I had to wait three days <laughs> before finally, you know, the call came to, to have a meeting. And I had such mixed feelings about it, Tony. On the one hand, I realized it was a huge opportunity in, in one way, mm -hmm. financially, which my mother and I were struggling a little bit at that time. Sure. Even though I was earning good money, I wasn't working constantly. You know, you have 
spells in between your right and it was before residuals spells. I understand and um, so uh, the idea of having large you know income coming in and so on and steady income was certainly um, you know very desirable and the other thing is that you uh, assumed he would uh, promote my career and all of that but on the other hand um, I was not at all sure about the personal aspects of it and what that might entail. Mm -hmm. And I knew that he was, uh, you know, had been involved with a lot of other starlets. And I really, really, really was not comfortable with the idea of that. So I remember thinking, okay, if he's really interested in me as an actress, <laughs> then that's one thing. But if it's... Uh, something else than that, then, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, respond. So I remember dressing very demurely, <laughs> you know, like a schoolgirl practically with a little shirt and, you know, skirt and, and very, very, very modest, very demure. And um, when we finally met at this uh, um, artist studio on Sunset Boulevard, I remember, um, he was kind of scary looking. Uh, when he came out, I just saw you know a few photographs of him prior to that time. Mm -hmm. But I remember him as being quite tall. I don't know if you know because I, I'm not sure how he really was, but to me he looked tall. And I don't know if he had ear plugs or something, but there seemed to be like a wire coming out of his ear hmm. and he really looks very strange and um, anyway when we started talking I remember thinking okay I'm going to let him know what I really like you know what I'm really and mm -hmm. things that interest me which were opera and the Russian literature <laughs> and <Sufi> poetry <laughs> and I thought okay he's either going to go for it or not and of course he didn't <laughs> well, it's, and, um, it's and an unbelievable I story. I expect him to, and I really didn't want him to. But I thought that was a nice way of kind of getting out of it all, you know, just to... Um, it's it, it's a marvelous story. And, and Lisa, <laughs> I, I hate to tell you, I'm really enjoying it, so we're going to have you back. We are out of time, and uh, I am so pleased to have had this chat with you and... Uh, there's a ton of other things we can talk about if you would be so kind to come back again. And uh, I know it's the early evening in California, so have a great night. And uh, we will be in touch, and I hope to have this interview produced so I can send it to you. And uh, please have a, um, a great night, a great rest of the summer, and we will talk again. Okay, Tony. I look forward to it. Thank you, Lisa. Bye-bye. Bye. And that was Lisa Zanti, Zanti, Zanti. So uh, as Jaja, Lisa Montel Zanti. We are going to be coming right back to close the show. And it's been a wild show and it's been a whole lot of fun to do. We'll see you in a moment. It's not the pale moon that excites me. That thrills and